Hey, I'm Shelly Montroy. And I'm DL. And what's your last name? <laughs> oh, no, I don't have a last name. I've been married too many times. <laughs> okay. You're like, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like Kylie. <laughs> okay, holy date myself. Okay, hey, I'm Shelly Montroy. And I'm DL. And this is our new podcast, Collaboration Station. We want to get you up close and personal with what remote co-writing and collaboration is actually like. We've been working remotely since before social distancing was a thing, but now it feels even more important. We're going to speak with people who are out there doing it successfully, making great music and sometimes even some money to go with it. I'm a queer, rural, Ottawa, but I can say that ten times fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a queer Ottawa Valley girl living happily on the North Shore of PEI with my life partner. (laughs) And I'm in deep leafy Hampshire in the southern UK. I'm a singer-songwriter, producer and film composer. And currently I'm performing in a trio with two great buddies who happen to be awesome musicians to boot. We're going to do our own musical co-writes with you as our fly on the wall guests, sharing all the ups and downs with you as they happen. So we're just two musicians and songwriters working to leverage remote tools to help us accomplish our mutual goal of making better music each day. And we are inviting you to join us on our journey. Robin Maravakil is a songwriter producer from Kingston, Ontario, and he has gone all in on his plans to write and record music from home. He has music that is actively being pitched to TV, film, and ads by sync agents, and he is actively remote co-writing with artists from around the world. His newest project is Kintsugi Collective, which he is building to provide music with one-stop clearance for sync licensing. Robin, the the music we used for our intro is the the co-write you and I did a million years ago when we were in the Catch the Moon Access program. You were saying yeah. that that, uh, that was your first remote co-write. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Learned a lot since then, but I, I think that was still a cool experience to get started with. Yeah, I'm pretty pretty pleased that I was there. For yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so and I'm, I'm really curious to hear about your, your, um, your new process compared to how we did it. So maybe just uh, maybe you could give us an idea of what you're up to right now. What are you up to? Sure. Um, well... I mean, it's a lot of the same as what was happening before everyone had to stay home. Um, so it's just been a lot of collaborations with various different writers and artists uh, all over the world, which is a lot of fun. And uh, so we got a bunch of songs that we're working on all the time and uh, in various stages. And then just on my own recently, I've also started it's a to- luxury to to wake up in the studio is right here. So right. I've also just started to work on my own um, little project that I can do whenever it fits. Uh, it's just me sitting here uh, and working on instrumental pieces that would serve as production music, hopefully mm. uh, in film and TV also. But I mean, in terms of what I love doing the most, it's definitely working with people all over the world. Sweet. Cool. Who are you working with right now? Are you able to name right drop? Right now, at the moment, so I could talk about open projects I have going on. So uh, I just wrapped up something with uh, Chris Clark, and he's a writer from Switzerland. Uh, and then the singer on that one was a singer from the UK. And then also I have uh, a couple of other people I work with pretty consistently, uh, uh, so those are Joe Uzo in Brooklyn and yep. Lindsay Campfoy, and she's in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So it goes all over the place. And then there's a couple of people in Los Angeles as well that we uh, we got something going on as well. Sweet. A lot of fun. Who's your UK co-writer? Maybe DL knows them. <laughs> you know like, what? His name you're, is You're gay? You do know this person? <laughs> and, uh, he sang on a song that... Uh, that he he wrote with Chris. So it, in that case, I jumped in just as the producer. So I haven't met Scott before. We haven't talked like we're talking now, uh, sure. which is kind of interesting. Haven't met him before, but uh, but I feel like I know him because yeah. I've, I've yeah. uh, kind of worked with him already and I've worked with his voice. And so music is 
kind of its own language in so many ways. Sweet. Yeah, definitely. Cool. How often would you say that you collaborate remotely, Robin? Um, well, I'd say 100% of the time, honestly. Uh, I moved away from uh, Toronto because I realized I didn't need to be in a huge, you know, mecca where I needed to, or where I would have to meet up with people uh, traditionally in, in a studio where, you know, you book a time, you spend money, and uh, you get in there, and then the pressure's on. So it's really uh, just based on what's been happening the past couple of years, especially meeting people all over the place who uh, who see uh, the music industry in a similar way as me. It's, it's, it's really nice. The world kind of opens up when you realize what's possible. Yeah, that's yeah so true. So true. So on that, on that note, what would you say the pros and cons are of this remote process for you? I remember when we, uh, we got together to, and we went to write and what ended up with it's the law. Um, you were a little nervous about the idea of writing, co-writing remotely, but you were like, you're so rock and roll. You're like, I'm doing it, doing it anyway. And that was a great process for me. I, I appreciated it. But for now, so now, like, I don't know, three years later, what do you think the pros and cons are for you of the process? Um, well, I mean, at the core of it really is finding good people to work with. Um, and so we, mm. we, we were lucky to have met already before we had done that. Um, and most of the people that I've, I've worked with, I've met in person. Um, or in the very least, you know, spoken uh, across the internet on a, on a call like this. Uh, but most of the people I, I know personally, and you know, we know a little bit about each other's lives, and and really, in in the case of you know doing it remotely versus in person, what could be lacking uh, so many times is the ability to kind of know what the other person's all about. Uh, if you just yeah. jump in and it, it's all business, so I found that it's Im yeah. important to to kind of just talk like regular people and kind of get a sense of what the other people are about, uh, at least whenever possible. So um, I don't know if that answers your question. Pros, I guess it's it just a pro is that it is all possible uh, with the internet and communication now. Uh, so that's one of the things that probably wasn't so easy to do just a few years ago. And uh, now everyone's getting used to it, uh, especially due to being locked down. So. I would say real quick on the cons, I suppose it is possible too that a project might take a bit longer than it normally would just because, you know, we're talking about working with people in different time zones. So I might be working over here. Someone is sleeping uh, in Europe mm. while I'm mm -hmm. finishing up something and then I'm going to bed. They're waking up to something new. And uh, so we're giving each other feedback maybe on a slower basis, but uh then, a, then another pro to that also might be that you're given a bit more time and thought to what the feedback's going to be. Maybe, maybe the process is a little bit more thoughtful. Who right. knows? But uh, yeah. So I guess, I guess with everything, you get the good and the bad, and uh, and you work around it if you can. Yeah. Cool. Do you have a preferred method of running collaborations remotely, or do you have a, a process that you that that you kind of follow? Um, well, I mean, a lot of the time it starts, it starts in a similar way where, you know, a lot of us are at that in real time. So if we're coming up with some lyrics or something or mm -hmm. talking about, uh, things we want to make sure we don't forget, we can all write it in there and, uh, that's done in real time. And then we often get on, uh, video calls as well, uh, two or three ways most of the time, but you can do more, um. What and, tool do you use for those video calls, Robin? Uh, it depends. We've been recently doing stuff on Zoom. Uh, Zoom is good. Um, for a one-on-one -on -one call, it's been sometimes simple enough to just get on Facebook Messenger. Mm -hmm. So you don't even need a special app for it. And then recently we've done Google Hangouts, I think it's called. Uh, we've, we've just... Uh, I, I suppose it depends who's starting it and what what they prefer to use. Uh, yeah. 
but it all it all works and uh and it it really gets uh, gets you going because you you can often schedule a time to start something and it's like showing up to a meeting you're just uh you're getting there and you're ready to get something done right yeah awesome. what's your favorite do you start between oh, sorry, on, i'm sorry dl yeah there's probably a bit of a lag so we'll have to get used to that but i'm kind of mixing in my question which is coming yeah. up with his answer to yours well, and i do want you to get back to that question because i think we're not done with it but you mentioned that you've used zoom and you've used google hangouts for video chats to discuss things do you have a do you have a preference between those like if you were to say well if i have the choice i'm going to use a or b out of a service to do video calls you mean yeah oh um well I would say Zoom just because I think I'm the most familiar with it. Yeah. Um, but it's it's all the same, really, as long as the connection is good. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have any favorites so far? I'm always looking for tips. Right. What about you, DL? Do you have a fave? Um, I like Zoom for group things. Um. And I like Skype for um, for one to ones, um, largely because you, I find it easier. I find it easier to, um, to to send each other stuff, and then it stores it in the conversation. So if we come oh, cool. back yeah. to um, like if Robin and I were having a chat, and I'm like, oh yeah, here's a reference track um, yeah. that you know you can you can look back you know months later and say, do you remember in January we were talking about this thing here and. Um, I like, yeah, I like, um, I like Skype for that sort of thing. But yeah, I think um, Zoom has taken over the world, haven't they? Everyone knows how to oh, use yeah. Zoom now. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people didn't know what Zoom was until nope. two months ago. No, nope. yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I feel like we're <laughs> veterans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've been Zooming since before it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's it so old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's that, Robin? We made it cool. We made it cool. <laughs> we did. So yeah, back to first. DL's question. She was asking about your preferred method of running a remote collaboration. I know that when I asked you that before, you said it depends. <clears throat> excuse me on who you're writing with and what they like to do. But but let's say you're in charge of the process. So you're going to sit and place all the like how it's going to go. How would it go? Uh, okay. I mean, we'd set up a time to do a video call, um, set up a Google document, make sure everyone's invited uh, beforehand and able to get in and edit. Um, and then, so I mean, I would, I would set up a Zoom call with a certain time uh, that we all agree on. We show up and uh, usually we're just going to talk and see what everyone's been up to at first. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, we'll often kind of spitball ideas on what a theme might be or a couple references beforehand uh, if anything mm. comes up. Uh, if you're starting from scratch, that's totally cool too. Uh, been there also, but usually we like to show up with at least a feeling of what something's going to be about. Um, so... Recently, I've really been enjoying actually starting with a reference track or two and kind of being able to talk about the elements mm. from maybe each of those that we yep. like and that mm. we might want to try to, you know, I, I, I'm always talking about like the energy and the feel of something more than I am like trying to emulate something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's, that's usually something worth having a discussion about. Uh, so we start, you know in the right frame of mind. Cool. How do you select reference tracks? Yeah, good question. Good question. I thought um, so. <laughs> sometimes, oh, you sometimes get paid the big I'm bucks. <laughs> listening to, uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> so sometimes it'll be something as simple as you just, you find something that you liked randomly, yeah. or you might have gone to look for it. Uh, I like kind of both of them. Yeah. Uh, for different reasons. So, I mean, sometimes 
I'll be watching TV or listening to a podcast or something and like the outro music to some podcast. I'm like, I got to find out what that is because I, I'd love to create something that feels like that. Yeah. Mm. And uh, sometimes you can find out what that is. Sometimes you can't. But uh, either way, you, you're gonna look, you're gonna be listening for something that'll remind you of that if you come across it later. So yeah. uh, that, or I mean, sometimes there's a song that's really hitting big right now, and you you you'd love to pr- produce something that makes you feel that way as well. So yeah. Um, and and you know, any anyone can come up with a, a song that is interesting and then you can talk about what makes it interesting and that's that's the part i like the most is kind of dissecting what what makes something worth using as a reference yeah okay cool i'm gonna pass it back over to you dl because i i kind of i horned in on your act asked my question <laughs> we were talking about my question was tools what tools you might use so and, we on number six now yeah Unless yeah, you have any other tools you might want to share with us. I'm I'm always looking for new and interesting ways to stay organized and on track and Okay. Trying I got to one, Yeah. It was just introduced to me fairly recently by a co writer um who was using it for other stuff that he was doing and it's called Voxer. I don't know if you know Voxer. It's an app okay. uh that you can put on your phone and it's a it, it's kind of like a messaging app. So it it you know, there's a thread of you know, what's been said and, and stuff like that. But what makes it a little bit different is that it's for voice uh, messages. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you could do exactly what it does with recording a voice memo and then sending it to, to, to your group. But what this does is you, you basically press it down. It's like a walkie talkie. And oh. so you can really get down something that would be, you know, time, time intensive to type out or, and and it's just sent immediately, but it stays okay. stored. So it's it's not like having a phone conversation, but it kind of is in the way that you're talking. Yeah. But you can store what the conversation has been, which is pretty interesting when you're talking about, you know, little feedback things on. Mm. Oh, I like how this vocal does this. Maybe try it like this. You can you can get yeah. that point across kind of quickly. So it's called Voxer, and. Uh, one they or did two not X's. pay me to say that, but V O X V O X E R. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah, because it's kind of like texting, but it's voice texting. Yeah, and you know, you can just you can kind of get your point across a little faster that way sometimes. Cool, rock and roll. Try it out. Cool. I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have any um funny stories, Robin, or horror stories or memorable things that have happened along the way when you've been collaborating? You can change the um, names to protect the hmm. innocent if you prefer. I, I don't have any <laughs> crazy or harrowing stories, really. Um because I was kind of talking about it before. I, I, I work mostly just with people I know. Yeah. Uh, or I've gotten to know. Um, so, I mean, if I think about a horror story that could happen, of course, it would be you're paired up with somebody and you're just not on the same page uh, mm, on yeah. expectations or ability or, you know, I work with mostly people I, I know already. So, um, so I don't expect any horror stories from them, but you would often get... Uh, maybe the possibility of having a scary story if if you're working with somebody that you didn't know and uh maybe they have some weird habits maybe they eat loudly <laughs> when you're on video call. i don't know but i mean i guess the most memorable thing is it keeps on coming up that i like some of the best people i know uh i've been working with uh and i've gotten to know them through writing songs together. Um, so, so I mean, that's the opposite of a horror story. I think that's, that's yeah. good. That's a good story. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why, well, that's why I want to keep working like this. Yeah. It, it kind of highlights for me that um, working remote doesn't mean working without a connection. 
entirely yeah. the opposite. I mean, really, because you and I um, have gotten to know each other better by working together remotely. I mean, we did meet first, so oh, yeah, uh, did buddies. you know that? Don't don't run far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was a fun day. I'll, uh, I'll remember she that. She dropped day. the f bomb. We met for a while. Uh, really, really hot, sweaty summer day, and so hot. Oh, I remember yeah, that actually. Because you told me it was about an outdoor it. Show. Yeah. What's that, DL? I re I remember I remember when that happened because you you told me she was so chuffed, Robin. She came and told me. Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was fun. A lot of fun. It was, but I guess what to to come back to what I was saying that. Um. It's definitely possible to to form new relationships and new connections even while being remote. Like DL and I have never met face to face. Yeah. And I also consider you, DL, to be a good friend. Yes. Yeah, and we haven't same. seen each other for a while. I missed your face. <laughs> <laughs> and my but, silly English uh, expressions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we yeah, were um much. we were accountability buddies, weren't we, for a while. So we were talking quite regularly for a while. And um and it's uh one of those things when when you're uh, sort of keeping each other accountable that um you tell each other all your biggest worries don't you and it's like well I'm not sure what to do about this and how do I yeah. prioritize that and you know and all that kind of stuff and um it is it is amazing how how close you can get to people that you know people that you've never met and that sort of thing it's really nice yeah it's it's like you're you're thoughtfully putting time aside to have a conversation, which is something I think maybe I know I don't always do uh, in the other part of my world where I'm not working remotely. I sometimes mm. forget to put aside time just to connect, but we have to when we work remote. That's a, that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't happen if, uh, if you don't make it happen. Right. For sure. Now, which brings us to our next question. Um, DL mentioned that she and I were accountability partners in the access program. And, uh, and I found that was just a really important tool for me in learning how to push myself just a little harder, having somebody who's there to help me push myself. How do you manage accountability in your, in your current co-write projects or do, or because, or do you even have to? Um, well, I mean, it's not always necessarily a case of having to check in. Um, I think most of the time, I would say, I would say, if you're, if you're working with the right team, you you don't want to let them down because you know that they're working uh, in a way that that they don't want to let you down either. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, in in the case of producing music remotely realistically you can't do too much all at once oftentimes someone will be over there recording vocals and you're waiting for that to be done to be sent to you yeah. so you can do your part so i mean it's just a, a case of respect uh for each other which most of the time you'll end up with if you work with people consistently um mm. But the, also, I mean, I like to to work with people where we have different strengths. Yeah. So, for example, I mean, I do I find myself in the producer's chair most of the time. Um, I don't work with that many other producers, um, but I do work with a lot of female artists. For example, that's something I can't do. I can't create a beautiful female voice. It's not right. going to happen. <laughs> uh, but they can, and so we we can kind of offer each other different things that we're really good at, and uh, and I I think that plays into accountability in some kind of way as well. So, have you got any tips, Robin, for um for for anyone looking to start collaborating? Um, what do you think is a good way to get started? Um, the first thing I would say really is, I mean, it's it's an exercise that you get better at, um, sort of the communication, what to expect uh, from how it works. There's a lot that'll be the same each time just because, you know, you do have to send your thoughts and uh, 
and your work back and forth. Um, so that that will always be the same for the most part, like the process. Mm. Um, so you you kind of just need to do it, try it out, and um, realize that everyone who you're going to work with, um, they're they're always learning how to do it better at the same time also. And then the other thing too is that, and it, it took me a little while to realize this, um, but you don't have to finish everything you start. Like writing a song with someone doesn't have to mean that it finishes in a fully produced, ready to release, be released kind of form. Hmm. It, it can be a good exercise to get you to the point where you're at the next song uh, yeah. that flows a lot better and you wouldn't get there without kind of going through the process with that person first where you kind of had to yeah, say, definitely. well, yeah, that was kind of a long winded response to that, but I hope that makes <laughs> some sense. Yeah, yeah definitely. Oh, it does. It's, it's kind of like everybody's posting online right now, <clears throat> how uh, they're feeling like how, how self-isolating is making people feel and how it's affecting their productivity and need the need to remind yourself that it's okay to do nothing sometimes. I know it's not the same as doing nothing because creating a song that you don't actually finish is a lot. It's yeah. the opposite of nothing. But giving yourself permission to not finish a song and not feel um, lesser because of it is a really good tip. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna just run a marathon without having trained to run at least half of it first. Right. So. So to get um, out of the creative mindset and into the <clears throat> into the nuts and bolts, what kind of paperwork do you have, if any, that that you typically would address on a co-write? Like, do you have a song split contract, um, and how do you manage that things administratively? Yeah, uh, I, I have a form that I like to use. It's it's pretty similar each time, although different agreements exist where. As the producer, you you're split in a different way, or you might get paid a little bit differently uh, before or after. Um, but in general, it's it's a pretty similar sheet each time. Um, just a little edit here and there to reflect any specifics. Do you would you mind sharing your your um, template for that? We can put it with the podcast. Uh, yeah, maybe I I'll have to. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll show you what I use. It's it's something that's been adapted from uh, from other people I've worked with, and uh, but I, I'm working on as well moving to a form where uh, it can be done all digitally. Nice. Um, so someone I someone I know has has a form like that, and uh, I just I just got to uh, had the pleasure of filling it out. So easy, so simple. Um, is it like a PDF with um, active fields? Is that what they use? It is, they... yeah. Okay. Um, so it may be something like that I send you. It might be just the the sheet that I was using. But I, I'll show you what I was using okay. for sure. You also mentioned that sometimes um, the contract will change um, based on your producer role. I'm just curious if you could elaborate a little bit on that, how it might change and, and when. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, a lot of the stuff I do is focused. Uh, well, I mean, it, it it kind of works in the way that the people I collaborate with, we all have pretty similar goals where we want to get the songs represented by somebody uh, who can pitch them to film and TV and ad opportunities. So a lot of the future of a song we see ideally in that space. So there's a lot of splits that de de depend on uh, the result of a placement. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of a lot of the ways I've done deals as a producer have been that the first certain amount of money generated from a license uh, that gets paid uh, as the producer's fee, and then okay. regular splits apply. But then there's other situations that I'm really comfortable with that I keep I keep working with the same people over and over again. 
that we just work on a like a three-way split basis mm. um, because we know that each other are going to be you know pitching the song as many places as they can and uh, using the connections that they've made so it really depends I mean there 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 are cases too that if you're a producer you might be hired to just produce a song so yeah you might split the master and uh, take a fee it it can be up for discussion every time and I think that's important mm -hmm. so having some structure but something structure that you can deviate from yeah yeah cool. I mean there's certain ways that I prefer to work but it's all up for discussion definitely your preference being um, getting the first having your fees paid out on the uh, when the placement is acquired yeah I just like the idea I mean in my particular case I, I just like that because it's uh, it's kind of like investing in the future so you know I, I'd like to I'd like um, the songs I work on to uh, to have some potential uh, for future revenue. I'm more concerned about that than making a few bucks right now and that being it. Yeah. Cool. Makes me more excited about what could happen with a song. Nice. Yeah, sweet. Cool. Well, I'll let you get to it. Thanks, man. Thanks again, eh? Thanks, okay. Roman. That's cool. Have All a right. great day. See you later. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. So it was really cool to catch up with Robin. Um, it's it's really nice how you know you meet people and your paths intersect, and then you you know they go off, and you think that you're never going to see them again, and and uh, and 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 here we are. We um, we all sort of end up crossing paths. Um, I guess uh, the incestuous nature of the music business is just global now. So. Right. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we all just keep that crossing image. paths, don't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was um, so my kind of um, Robin had some really cool, th you know, lo loads of really great advice, and um, there were there were three things that um that really struck a chord with me. Um, pardon the pun. Um, <laughs> firstly. <laughs> Firstly, what he said about um, getting to know someone as a person um, is something that I think whenever I've got neck deep in projects that have turned out to be a nightmare, it's been because they're with people who I don't I don't really know. I don't really know them as people. I don't really know them musically. Um, we haven't really talked about, you know, our expectations and stuff. And when he was talking about that, I was reflecting on um, situations where I've been working with a with a producer. Um, take Billy Leffler, for example. Um, yeah. I've been, I've been working with a with a producer where the project's gone really really well, and that step has actually been really thorough. The like, um, you know, Billy chatted with us, you know, back back and forth. Like he took way more time to get to know us before we were there, and then even on the day that you know the, the first day that we went you know that we were in the studio we sat down for like an hour just just talking Sweet. and um so by the time you get to right so this is the thing you've you've got a real sense of of what that person is about and I think that actually is a really important foundation step um but it's never really I've never consciously recognized that until Robin just said that so thank you Robin for that yeah right um that was yeah. That was that was the first thing. Um, what do you think? Is, is that had, well, have you had that experience? <clears throat> yeah, I totally agree. And it, what it makes me think about is the times where I've had um, not not a hundred percent good experiences in the studio, face to face with a yeah. producer or somebody. Are the times also that the that we haven't really crossed that bridge properly? Mm. Um, mm that when I have felt like my producer maybe hasn't spent, d done their due diligence to get to know me or the, my project and my goals, yeah, I end up feeling dissatisfied mm. or, it, or maybe they've tried, but we just don't get each other, you know, yeah. because not everybody's a good match. Yeah. Getting each other also just comes down to, I think maybe just a little bit of chemistry. 
bit of mm. magic and you're not going to have magic with everybody. So it was a really good point on his part. And I, I think it's not just for remote collaborations. Um, yeah. But for in-person ones as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's like having someone you don't get on with in your band, isn't it? It's just a oh, nightmare. Yes. A nightmare. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, crikey. Yeah, the um, the second thing that he said, that sorry, is that another word that needs to go in the glossary? <laughs> <laughs> crikey. He meant, yeah, Robin mentioned a tool called Voxer, which was um, which which sounds really good. It's like a uh, like a voice memo sharing collaboration tool, sort of on a practical level. Um, yeah, that um, that sounded like yeah. I'm definitely going to check that out. And I know you said uh, you were you were going to as well. And the last thing um, was uh, what Robin was saying at the end there about you know don't worry about um, don't feel like you have to finish everything and don't don't feel like you know if you're um, flogging a dead horse <laughs> see yeah, i'm just really one. conscious now of like are, are you gonna know what i mean <laughs> yeah um if yeah if you're if you feel like you're you know um beating something around the head that isn't ever going to be it, that isn't ever going to be usable or or whatever like not not to worry to let go of stuff and i think i've definitely been guilty of um feeling like you know particularly when you are working remotely and it's a lot of time and it's a lot of effort and it often does take a lot longer um in in my experience sometimes for me the time difference works in my favor and sometimes it really works against me depending on um you know where the person is and what our deadlines are and 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 that kind of thing and i've certainly been um i've i've certainly been guilty of um wanting to come away from every single thing with something that's um something that's really really liquid gold and it's just not going to happen and um, there's another producer that I know called Mark Hill, who um, who was the original Dodger. Um, Mark is um, is um, is one of our mates. He's he's uh, mates with Chris and I. And uh, I did, and and that's something that he used to say. I, I did a couple of masterclasses with him. He produced Craig David and the Born to Do It album and all that. And, and one of the things that he said in his masterclasses was like, you know, if it's if if it's too much like hard work, just let it go. And I think that's something that I'm not very good at. Right. I think I will, I will, um, I, I will like gnaw and grind and beat something around the head when I should really just learn to let it go. So I'm going to try that. <laughs> so I know you need to go, but the first step in us um, starting our public co-write is picking a theme. So maybe mm -hmm. we can just do that. I know that um, I've been attending uh, the Triple Threat Artist office hours a lot lately. Yeah. So Josh was saying that he's getting um, the pitches that sync agents are asking for the most right now are songs about um, being thankful and being hopeful. Mm. And, mm. you know, for sure, people are posting a lot of commercials right now where they're thanking our essential service workers and yeah. uh, and and want to convey that there there's going to be hope because we are flattening the curve. So it makes a lot of sense. So maybe we should pick one of those two themes. Yeah, I like I like both of those. Um, um yeah, I, I I I like both of those. I think um my, my gut is telling me that thankful is probably. I don't know. I get the feeling that that's, that's probably. Uh, more people doing that right do you think but do you want to do you want to try a hope I, I, I really don't mind yeah either of those is so cool. what I usually do if I'm starting from scratch is I'll look I keep a I keep an ongoing list of uh, lyrical hook ideas in uh, mm -hmm. I've got I use the app the keep app which is a google tool I don't know if you are familiar yeah, with that, I but I that. have it on my phone and I can see it on my computer and, and you know, all, across all my devices because it's a Google tool, keep.google.com. Oh, cool. So okay. I'm going to go to my uh, Keep app and see which lyrical hooks I may have already stored that meet, that, that sort of convey one of those themes, hmm. hopeful or thankful. And maybe yeah. what I can do is is send you a couple ideas and you can see which one resonates for you. Yeah, that'd be great. That's a great place to start. Okay. 
Let's do cool. that. I'm, I'll let you go to you um, get in the studio with Chris and uh, do your things. Yeah, thanks, Han. So, woo, woo. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll see you on Messenger. Just give us a shout if I okay. can do anything. Hi to Chris. Thanks, Shao. That was really good soon. fun. That was fun. Yeah, thanks, babe. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.